second grade stop motion Lego movies to actual some, some cool stuff using green screens and nonsense like that. Next up, we have Michael Kropp with Why Everyone Should Make Movies. All right, how is everyone today? Good, all right, you guys know how to talk. Great start. So I'm gonna start off with a question, and if the answer is yes, uh, just raise your hand. Can we all do that? Yeah. Uh, all right. Yes. <laughs> all right, good, good. See, you're learning, you're catching on. Uh, so how many of you guys here have seen a movie, just in general? Okay, good. Uh, good few of you, and for those of you who didn't raise your hand, you're gonna be really confused by what I have to say. <laughs> Now, here's a more interesting question. How many of you have actually gone out and made a movie? All right, we see a couple people who are way too excited and kind of nerds. It's good, it's good to have enthusiastic people. Um, well, my name is Michael Krupp, and I am a filmmaker. And being a filmmaker has taught me two things. One, how to be alone in a dark room while editing with no friends. The second, it's also taught me how to become a better person. In fact, it's done this so much that I think everyone should at least try making a movie at least once in their life because it has some valuable skills um, that everyone should learn. Now, uh, as Peter Jackson once said, the most honest form of filmmaking is making a film for yourself. And you may think, what is making a film for yourself and how is this going to make you a better person? And uh, we're going to get to all that, but first, I'm going to embarrass myself. Now that kid, I want to say it's not me. I really do, but that is me at nine years old. Uh, that's when I first started making movies. Uh, I went under an alias called Force Power Movies and Force from Star Wars because I liked that. And as Sabrina said, I made stop motion movies, and I'm going to show you one right here, and I am super embarrassed to show this to you. It is uh, not one of my best work, but <clears throat> let's, uh, let's give this a try. changing it because I was a nine-year-old and lazy, I just talked really, really, really fast. <laughs> and then to do the credits, I didn't have technology to actually do the real credits, so I wrote it on a piece of paper and <laughs> taped it on a poster board and said, good enough. Um, so I, how is that going to make you uh, a better person? Uh, and I'm going to, to really know how that's going to do that, uh, we have to know uh, what films do uh, to you and for you. Um, First thing films can help you do is be more social. Now, I have an uncle, his name is John. And back in the day when he was a little bit younger, he was diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome. Uh, now, there's a debate about whether this is still an actual accurate diagnosis or not. Uh, I'm not sure I've been researched into that. I just know what he was diagnosed with earlier. But the basic idea behind it is it's kind of like autism, where a person can be really, really smart with technical, knowledge, but 
not so smart in social cues. They can't pick those up accurately. In fact, before, my mom tells me before he was even in kindergarten, he could read adult material. He could read newspapers, uh, adult reading level books. He was really, really good at it. And then he also told me a lot of embarrassing stories where he couldn't really pick up social cues and he couldn't understand the social ramifications. Well, a couple years later, he decided that he wanted to be a comedian because a lot of people liked comedians and he wanted to be really liked. So he went off to Chicago to Second City. And he worked there for such a long time that he became an executive producer at Second City. And he worked with people like Seth Meyers, uh, Lauren Michaels, and even uh, met Justin Timberlake to get together and, and write something for them. And as an executive producer, he was in charge of making web series videos for Second City. Um, and he got really, really good at this. And now that he's no longer at Second City, he's still making com uh, com uh, excuse me, comedic videos for uh, clients and individual businesses. I've never had any memories of when he didn't really pick up social cues, but the memories I have of him, he's always been the most charismatic person in the room. He's always been happy, he will always tell a joke to make you feel better, he'll have that kind of Chicago, Midwestern sense of humor. And I asked him, and I said, how is it that you went from a place where you're so insociable to a place where you're very, very social? And he said, well, it's simple. Making movies and being in comedy has a set of rules. Uh, let me give you an example of some of these rules. Now, on the far left, right, we have a character that's very big in the frame. He almost fills the entire frame. And we have a low angle as if we're looking up at him. Now, this is supposed to signify that this character is tough, is intimidating, and more of a man than me. Now, on the, the right side, we have um, a character who's very small in the frame, and we have a high angle pointing down to show that we're looking down at this character, and this character is weak. Now, this is called cinematography, and this is a more creative way of explaining a story through the visuals. And you have all have seen this and have not particularly noticed it. Like, if you've seen Star Wars, you didn't know that Darth Vader was the villain because he walked in and said, Hey, I'm the villain. Let's go on with the plot now. Uh, we know he's the villain because he enters in, he's big, he has very dark colors, and he has this very big stance in the shot. And so, uh, with those rules he learned in filmmaking, he learned, he got better at picking up social cues as well. Because both these images and both these examples are conveying an emotion, whether that's like intimidation or fear or isolation and loneliness. And that's what a lot of filmmaking is doing. It's conveying emotions and feelings. And he was smart enough to take that information that he learned and apply it to social settings. And that's another thing I want to go over is that making films can educate you on what it's like to be human. And I'm going to give you an example. Uh, Saving Private Ryan, released in 1998, by, directed by Steven Spielberg, um, is about a soldier in World War II named Private Ryan who these group of soldiers have to go, and their mission is to save Private Ryan. Spoiler alert. Um, so during this film, uh, there's a lot of battles of World War II, and there's the famous Normandy Beach battle that opens the film. Now, because this film was very popular, and because of that Normandy Beach example, um, the Veterans Affairs Office set up a hotline for people who have seen the film, because they were getting a lot of reports that this film had brought back such vivid memories of what it was like at that actual battlefield. Uh, and in the first week, there were reportedly 14,000 calls. Or in other words, that's 25 calls per minute. And at the time, this was the most rapid amount of calls they were receiving. And veterans and historians alike, as the film, and while they were talking on these phones, claimed it was the most accurate representation uh, in film of what it was like in that day. And sure, you may not understand what the emotional trauma was, what any sort of symptoms of PTSD may have felt like, but you can understand what it sort of felt like when watching the film, of what a soldier um, felt like going into battle. And so that's a point I want to make, is that we can convey our human experiences through films. Like, for example, if you humiliate yourself um, in a bad breakup, and you want to convey an emotion like that, and you don't have to
express yourself, you can make a film about it. If you feel like not a lot of films have the Bechtel test in them and you want to make more films with that, you can add that into the film. And I want to show you an example of a film that I made uh, back in 2016. And I'm just going to, without any context, just sort of show it to you and see if you can pick up uh, what I'm trying to convey. When I show that film to younger audiences, um, they don't quite fully get the joke. I heard a couple of you laughing, and I'm, I'm here to say, once I really uh, see the meaning of this film, it's totally okay to laugh. This, of course, is a ludicrous situation, but I made this film because it's sort of an analogy for uh, rape culture. At the time I made this film, those stories were going uh, around, and I heard and like listened to a bunch of them. And I made this film because I wanted to give another perspective on the you know, opposite side of the argument that you know, I, you know, I felt with and I related with. Um, and that's another thing too, when sharing you know, experiences on film, even though i would never gone through a situation like this, I can still relate to some of the stories you know, I've been hearing about these women and these people. And that's what I kind of wanted to do. I kind of wanted to make a film about their perspective. And then another thing 
that I want to add is that anyone can make films. And that's the great thing. We can have so many different perspectives and so many different opinions on films. Now you may be thinking, you know, it's great that making a film does all these stuff, but I don't have expensive equipment. I don't have these giant, giant rigs and this huge cast and crew, but really, you don't need that. In fact, you can make a film with just an iPhone. There's even settings that can help where you can turn your phone light, uh, phone camera into a light by shining the flash. And if you have an Android, that saying is not included and that means it's going to explode. So, fair warning on that. Um, and even, there's even some films that have been very successful on an iPhone. Uh, this film uh, is called Tangerine. It's in, it was made in 2015. And it was an independent film made entirely on an iPhone using an app called Filmic Pro. And it won, uh, for, in the Independent Spirit Awards, it won Best Director, Best Actor, and Best Feature Film. And the reason it won all these awards is because it's a captivating story. It's sharing the human experience and it's giving another perspective. And that's what a good film does. It makes you care and relate to people's perspective and their experience, even if you haven't gone through their experience or may not necessarily agree with their uh, perspective. And that's what we kind of saw in the last film. Even though it's kind of funny that this guy's trying to call 911 he's not listening, we can relate to the frustration of that guy as he's trying to talk to 911. And then another thing, my last thing I'm gonna go over is that films can give you amazing experiences. I don't just make films uh, for myself. I also go out and I make films for other people. Um, in 2016, uh, I went to the Valdez Theater Conference, which was this conference where you could go and you could learn about acting and stage acting. And all these famous theater actors and playwrights come here. And at the end, there's this dinner that they decided to make a themed show. They called it Speakeasy. You would enter, you'd have to get like this password to enter. It was like a speakeasy. Um, you could bet with fake money. And I filmed the entire experience and those special effects I just learned to do on a basic YouTube tutorial. Uh, during Memorial Day weekend, we were invited out on a boat trip in Prince William Sound, and I decided to bring some camera gear along and film uh, Prince William Sound. We had some people coming out from out of state, and so I gave the film uh, to them so that they can keep and cherish those memories. Um, and I feel like I've talked a lot about the artsy side of filmmaking, but I just want to remind everyone that Sometimes you can make a film just for fun, just because it's you know stupid and funny. Um, last year, uh, and I'm still in this program, but last year I was in the school announcements program. And when we were first starting out, uh, we made these really, really bad announcements videos. So bad that uh, my teacher, Mr. Barfield, would not allow them to air because they were so bad. They weren't offensive, they just were really, really low quality. Um, and so me and my partner Wyatt at the time, we got frustrated and we were so tired from doing this. And so Wyatt got this idea of, hey, why don't we just do something completely stupid and funny? And I said, okay, what do you have in mind? And he said, why don't we do a gangster movie and then read the announcements like we're 1940s gangsters. And because that was such a ludicrous idea, but it was so fun, I said yes, and we did that. And we were laughing the whole time. And the whole time we were saying, this is never going to be put on announcements ever. This is so funny. This is so great. And then the next, the day, two days after we filmed it, it was on announcements because he actually liked it and thought it was good. And so that's the last video I'm going to show you guys today is that announcements that we created. Yeah, right. 
so much. If you want to see any more of my work, uh, this is the link, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the speeches. Thank you so much for being a great audience.